Today we get back to Chief Tech cases and uh, what a case this is actually. I was uh, really surprised that you have to say in terms of, uh, well, the space, first the space, the stallion tree from Chief Tech is huge, but <clears throat> the thing is, it doesn't leave the outer impression that it's that big in terms of size, the, the capacity inside, the orientation, the placement of the parts inside is quite nicely organized, I would say. So this is an interesting case and for the first time on this channel, in this case, well, this case has the honor to have a new AMD processor inside. So quite interesting today, we're going to test it out, we're going to have the thermals for that as well inside this case. So we're going to have two, let's say, reviews, but it's going to be mainly for Chief Tech because we're going to check out all the details for Stellion 3. So let's go. First things first, when you buy a case, you do check what kind of fans does it have. Does it have fans at all? Uh, in this scenario, we have three on front, so three 120 millimeter addressable RGB fans and one 120 millimeter addressable RGB fan at the back. They're all connected, including the cable for the speed and including the cable for the addressable RGB to a controller at the back. This controller connects then again to this front panel where you have the possibility to adjust the speeds so you can lower the speeds or pump them up and you can adjust the modes for the RGB. Now there's one more thing of course, uh, you get a remote control which you can control the RGB since the back panel is constantly closed uh, so you don't have to you know maybe check or maybe press over there, you do have a controller right here on the front, you have a remote control to do that as well. So you can adjust the speeds with your remote control, you can adjust the lights with your remote control, everything. And the remote control actually has more functions than right here. This is, I would say, somewhat a shortcut to be able to adjust everything, but that's completely different story. Now there's also an option for you guys to connect the controller at the back with 3-pin addressable RGB 5V header directly to your motherboard. So that's really cool. Now, <clears throat> there's something here I can't show you because of the new placement, well, because of the placement of the motherboard in terms of PCI Express slot for the graphic card. Usually we have graphic cards standing uh, a bit higher and this means that I can't place the GPU anti-sag bracket that comes with the case. You have a big pole going here, which gives you an opportunity to uh, basically with two clips to adjust the, well, to prevent GPU from sagging. And you can place it anywhere you wish. But for instance, this is really cool. You get two of those uh, anti-sag, let's say brackets. And when I unbox the case, you get them in position that one is on top of the GPU and one is on bottom. If it's still a thing to run an SLI or if it's still a thing to run, uh, well, if you're in the need of two graphic cards for your graphic design for editing or anything similar to that and you want to run uh, in, I don't know, water cooling stuff, uh, it ha you can rotate it and place it so we can hold both graphic cards in place and they won't sag. That's a really cool thing. Now, when we're talking about the space, now here's the cool thing. Now we have here the power supply shroud. Here on top, you have a couple of holes which can be used for smaller cables at the back where the motherboard is, such as power on button, reset button, and uh, LED uh, lights uh, when we're talking about indication lights. <clears throat> right here on the front, you don't have a power supply shroud, but this is really cool. Because what you could do there is place a pump res, tube res uh, combo uh, if you decide to go with a custom loop, which will give you quite enough space. Because again, I have an MSI RTX 3070 Supreme X standing right here and you still have loads of space. When I'm saying loads of space, you have 430 millimeters of space for the GPU without anything on front. Now since I mentioned some dimensions let's go quickly through the specifications because I don't want to you know uh, bother you too much with details. So for instance uh, here we go 0.6 millimeter SPCC and tempered glass side panel. It supports mini ITX, micro ITX, ATX and E-ATX motherboards. Total dimensions are 572 times uh, 210 times uh, 520. 
It weights around 11 kilos, 12.8 kilos with the package and stuff like that, but okay. It supports, so stock, it supports uh, four 2.5 inch SSDs and two 3.5 inch hard drives. The hard drive bays are in the bottom of your power supply shroud. And for the SSDs, you have them on the side at the back. It has support for ATX power supply, quite logical, which they suggest an optional dimensions of 200 millimeters. When we're talking about the front panel I.O., we have two USB 3.2 generation one, two USB 2.0, audio out and microphone in, RGB brightness button, fan speed control button. So you have two buttons actually for the fan speed, but that's cool. In the box, you get a set of screws, instruction manual, thumb screws, remote control, which is really outstanding, RGB control hub with three pin, five volts, motherboard sync and SATA power. So the controller needs to be connected to your power supply to get enough juice to run everything, which is quite normal. For the GPU, as already stated, 430 millimeters and maximum tower clearance for your CPU tower cooler is 160 millimeters. Now let's talk about radiators and fans. You already have three 120 at front, but you could also go with one 180 millimeter. On top, you could go with either two 120 or two 140, and at the back, you could go with one 120. For the radiator support, you can go front 360, top 240, and rear. I'm not sure if you could squeeze up, maybe you could squeeze 120 at the back, but I'm not sure. So here's the thing. What I wanted to do is place a 280 at the top because I didn't read the specifications. I always tend to, uh, let's say, investigate and um, try to find out uh, how the case functions by myself in terms of seeing what I think it might be possible and what is actually possible. So I placed, I tried to place 280 at the top and it's really missing like a couple of millimeters to place a 280 at the top because there is really enough clearance for the motherboard to fit perfectly and for the AIO to be at the top. So for instance, I tried placing EK AIO Elite. It didn't fit because it was too long because of the tubes and everything, blah, blah, blah. Now, I also tried to use Be Quiet's one, the 280 uh, Pure Loop 2FX, and this one literally needs like a millimeter and a half, which is so unfortunate because this case would give more opportunities and more possibilities. So I placed the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 240 addressable RGB, which fits perfectly fine. And just one more thing, it has thicker radiator than the Be Quiet and EK1. So what happens here, it can also fit without a problem. It has like four millimeters of clearance, or maybe even less, I have three millimeters of clearance by not touching the VRMs, uh, the VRM heatsink of the motherboard, which is outstanding, I would say, yeah. So 360 on front, 240 on top, with slight modifications, but it's all up to you. You could maybe squeeze a 280, but uh, you do need to take uh, into consideration uh, carefully the calculations and everything do check before cutting the case. That's my idea. But the cool thing and what I want to see more in cases, the push, let's say push pull, I would say something like that, push pull uh, doors. So you press it here on top and the top part just pops open. This is how you clean the top dust filter. And it's fairly easy. I mean, you just have to click it and it pops out. I think uh, manufacturers should use this, not technology, but this patent, pattern, whatever patent, to uh, open the front dust filter. I actually thought that the front dust filter has the same thing, which would be really outstanding. But just having it on top is also really cool because I haven't seen this thing, this way to open a dust filter for quite some time. So let's see this. We have two addressable RGB lines on top, which are connected to the fans and connected to the back fan as well. So that's really cool because it kind of gives some more, let's say design, personalization, you can do whatever you want with it. But let's talk about thermals. So the GPU ran as usual. Uh, basically when I used the AIDA 64 Extreme Edition, uh, only GPU and CPU, uh, GPU went up to 55 which means that this case really can cool it 
nicely I would say and that's not it I even lowered the fan speed to get normal decibel level noise and to get normal thermals and stuff like that you know great airflow and stuff like that so I don't have too much noise and the 7900X AMD Ryzen 9 the new platform the AM5 in AIDA Extreme Edition just with the CPU ticked so we'll get to the other part later on got 74 deg degrees Celsius but here's the catch uh, when taking CPU FPU cache and system memory the CPU went up to 79 and the GPU went to 61 just to clarify some things I do all my benches when testing out the cases and coolers in AIDA 64 Extreme Edition so I went a bit deeper, I didn't do the Cinebench test, the R23, but what I did is Indigo Bench with Bedroom and Supercar. So the processor went, the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X, went up to 89 degrees Celsius. Just to clarify, there's no problem with the case. There's no problem actually with the processor. Those are the new temperatures that are running currently on those AMD Ryzen 7000 series and that's it. But to have in AIDA Extreme Edition with 240 mm radiator on top and having 79 at peak, so it lowers down to 74, it goes to 79 and it varies just between those 74 and 79, which is quite outstanding, I would say. And uh, I can say that the airflow through this case is really good. At the back you have quite nice space, um, shame it's not a bit thicker to have half a centimeter at the back uh, for better cable organization in terms of the thickness. You can really do loads of uh, nice stuff at the back when we're talking about Velcro ties and the zip ties, whatever, just to have those cables fixed in one position and to properly close the side panel. But yeah, that's quite alright. When we're talking in general and when we take into consideration the price that you get for addressable RGB fans 120 and you get a quite solid and nice looking case. I do have to admit there are no flaws when we're talking about manufacturing process and the case arriving here for review. Uh, when we take into look some visual aspects you can also uh, place uh, if you're still into that uh, Blu-ray burner, DVD burner or whatever here on top which has the possibility. I'm really satisfied with the case. First of all, the space first, then we have four 120 millimeter fans, addressable RGB, and not to mention the multiple possibilities to control the lights and the speeds. So you have the controller on top, you have the controller at the back, and you have a remote control on your desk. Loads of space, huge graphic cards, nice cooling. I do have to admit, really nice cooling. And that's basically it. Big thumbs up for Chief Tech and their Stallion 3 chassis does look quite nice altogether when we take everything into consideration. So guys, I'll place the links below if you're interested in checking the Stallion 3. You can check out all the details there as well. And if you're new to the channel, like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos as always. And finally, thank you for watching. Hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.